I'm so honored this morning to be meeting with a young innovator of our generation. Oh, you flatter me too. Creating <laughs> the Web3 space, you know, uh, with so much excitement. Zen, tell us a little bit about Web3 Art. So, um, Web3R's vision is really to make identities a little bit more non-custodial. And what does that mean, right? It's, it's, it's a weird term. Um, you know, today, all of our digital identity and who we are online is represented by other entities. If I use um, any login, any, any federated login to access a particular um, application of some sorts, that login is owned by that issuing entity not by the individual themselves, right? Our vision is really to shift that power dynamic to the user and have the user have that ownership of their own digital identity. And, you know, uh, I heard that you already have like 19 million users, you know, onto your platform. We've been doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely, you know, powering a global wave, you know, with your partnership with uh, chains like Solana and Ethereum uh -huh. uh, and with very, very, you know, uh, reputable investors. Tell us a little bit about your growth journey from here. Web3 today um, is really gaining uh, mainstream adoption. It's been increasing year on year. Mm -hmm. But the user experience to using wallets and applications in Web3, it's still relatively difficult. Did you know that about 20% of Bitcoin in total circulation has actually just been lost due to lost public-private key pairs? And um, yeah, and seed phrases are a huge contributor to that. So we replace seed phrases on wallets and applications with basically a login that users are familiar with, like your Google login, a non-custodial Google login. And we do this via what we call multi-party computation. It's a little bit too much to get into right now, but it's basically like a multi-factor account, which splits the key on the user's devices and mm -hmm. things that a user owns themselves. You know, while transition to Web3 is gaining a lot of speed and momentum and definitely at scale, uh, one of the biggest challenges is that it's still in a uh, pretty much the early adopters uh, and the innovator space. Uh, to make it mainstream, you know, to your point, the user authentication and lock-in is going to be one of the 100%. key. 100%. It's all about UX. It's exactly. all about user experience. How do you share with us what's the user experience, you know, for laymen like myself? Oh, I mean, actually... Don't, don't use the word cross-computational. <laughs> <laughs> Multiparty. No, but I, actually it feels just like a normal standard Google login. Like you can use Google or your passwordless login, really any login. And what we do is we use that login as one of the factors to your key. Mm -hmm. And we use the device that you're on as the second factor. Both these factors like help you secure your account. So the user experience is literally, I'm on a Web3 application and I want to use it. Uh -huh. All I do is I literally log in with Google and I'm done. That's it. You are solving very global scale problem and it's complex, although you make the experience simple and easy and that's what it's all about. Tell us, how is Google supporting you in this regard? I mean, in, in quite a few ways. Um, so I mean, in particular, we're built in Google Cloud and um, Google Cloud for us has been definitely the cleanest solution and our choice. And that's mainly because uh, we use a lot of Kubernetes, mm -hmm. um, and which is a Docker orchestration system. And Google Cloud, by far, I mean, it's literally built on Kube. It's it, it's Kube from ground up. And I mean, when, when our our system requires two things: logins today, when people are taking a look at them, need global latency. Mm -hmm. Anywhere in the world, I want to log in under two seconds, right? I want to access my account almost instantly. That's the user experience that people need. And then we need performance, right? Because people don't just log in like um, consistently over time. There's spikes in traffic it constantly, right? Like the crypto when there's events, <laughs> when the crypto markets are, when there are launches, you know, all of these things. Yeah. Um, logins become the spikes in traffic. For us, we need a Kubernetes setup that's multi region and multi cluster across the globe. Uh, GKE provides us a fantastic way to do that. Honestly, it saved us so much when talking about all the scripting that we'd have to write, the, 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 the instances that we have to pull out, monitoring and logging. It's, 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 been, it's been a wonder, truly.
you are an innovator and an inspiration to <laughs> our next, new generation <laughs> of Web3. Uh, tell us a little bit more where you see the trends, you know, taking us uh, forward. Things definitely have been bearish as of, uh, with a treasury rate hikes and inflation being high. I think the whole tech community has taken a little bit of a pause. And you're still investing when things are bearish? Uh, I mean, what infrastructure? So people always need infrastructure, mm -hmm. you know? What bear markets are good for is it's good for cutting out this noise, right? Cutting out, like, it, it was the same with the dot-com boom and the same with several other innovations that came before this. Like, there's your hype cycles and the downturns cut the noise and some of the best projects are really built during this time. And I'm really excited to see, I think the use cases for what we'll see, not just in terms of Web3, but in terms of tech, like as we move forward to the future, I think Web3 would be a big part of that. But a lot of these things we wouldn't have even have thought of, right? Using tools to improve uh, the efficiency and collaborations in, in a real-time basis online is really important, I think. Definitely that's one of the just big takeaways.